I got a hundred dollar check from my grandma. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund and it's gone. Banks and financial institutions usually don't have your best interests at heart. Well, well what can I do to get back I'm my- I'm sorry, sir, but this line is for bank members only. Next, please. And they can seize your funds, freeze your account, and dictate where you can spend your money. This video is part of a series about how to be your own bank. That means storing your own money. It's a private vault. And using crypto instead of your bank card. It's just money, bro. In this episode, I'll teach you about crypto wallets. Before I show you my favorite crypto wallets, I want to mention that technology changes all the time and my list of favorite wallets is frequently updated. As I update this video, I'll post links in the description below. To begin, what is a crypto wallet? Well, just like you use a normal wallet when you want to access your cash, you use a crypto wallet to access your cryptocurrency. Some people think of them as the things that store your crypto, but if you look under the hood, it's a little more complicated. The truth is none of your cryptocurrency is actually stored in your wallet. What's inside your wallet is a private key, which is like a password that allows you to unlock your cryptocurrency on the blockchain. The wallet is like a porthole connecting your private key to your crypto. But you don't really need to understand any of that. All you need to know is that your private key is very important and you must make sure to look after it and have a backup. You try and remember for me, this is very important. I'll go into security tips for storing it and backing it up at the end of the video. Now there are all kinds of different types of crypto wallets. To figure out which one suits you best will depend on what you want to use it for. Using a wallet to store your savings each day, well you want to optimize for security. Using it to buy groceries, you'll want to use the most convenient option. Concerned about privacy, well there are some great options that prioritize this. But a big difference between wallets is whether it's custodial or non-custodial. These things can look the same from the outside, but inside they're quite different. One of them is storing your private key directly on the device. The wallet company can't access your key, only you can. And if you lose that key, you lose access to your crypto. This is called a non-custodial wallet because the wallet company isn't taking custody of your funds. You have complete control of your funds and no one else can touch them. Hands off the merchandise! On the other hand, a custodial wallet works kind of like a crypto bank. There is no private key inside your wallet and because you don't have access to the private key, you don't have access to crypto on the blockchain. Instead, the crypto bank is looking after or custodying that key and crypto for you. Each time you withdraw or transfer funds, you do so with their permission. For many people, the responsibility of looking after their own private key might be too much. You might be just getting started or you might have a habit of losing your passwords. Uh-uh, you didn't say the magic word. There is no password reset button when you're storing your own crypto. If you lose your key, you've lost your crypto. More than 7,000 Bitcoin locked away in the device. If Stefan could only remember his password. There's no chance of remembering something that complicated from 10 years ago. If that sounds like you, a custodial wallet might be more helpful for you so that you can hit that reset button and get a new password anytime you want. But you're trusting someone else with your money. I'm counting on you. I'm not gonna go into custodial wallets in this video or show you how to use crypto banks because I wanna teach you how to be your own bank. But there is a link in the description below to a tutorial on how to get started that way if you'd prefer. We're gonna look at non-custodial wallets wallets that give you full control over your own money. And because you're the one looking after your money, it's a lot of responsibility. So make sure that you're ready. I'm ready. There are hot wallets and cold wallets. Hot wallets are connected to the internet, usually an app on your phone or desktop or a website or browser plugin. And most are usually super easy to use. It's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Convenience is key with these wallets, but because they're connected to the internet, they're easier to hack. A website might get breached, or perhaps you've clicked on a dangerous link, or didn't update your software, and a bug has compromised your device. So generally, you only want to keep money in these wallets that you access regularly. We'll go into where to put the bulk of your money in a moment, but for everyday access, a phone wallet is probably the easiest. These wallets are apps that store your private key directly on your phone, and they look something like Venmo. You see your balance, you can send funds to others, and you can receive funds. Different wallets will support different cryptocurrencies, and I use Use many different cryptocurrencies. So my favorite multi-currency phone wallet is the Edge wallet. It's super easy to use and supports all of these. I can also trade between cryptocurrencies easily inside the app 
Edge doesn't have access to any of your funds or information and doesn't ask for a phone number, email or any other personal information in order to set up an account, which is a great plus. Another wallet that I use that only supports Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash is the Bitcoin.com wallet. It's a really fast wallet and easy to use, and it's also non-custodial. It also supports SLP tokens, which are tokens on the BCH blockchain. You can purchase BTC and BCH easily inside the app, can swap easily between them and stable coins. My favorite feature of the Bitcoin.com wallet is that they have an interactive map that locates nearby merchants that accept BCH as payment. Accepting crypto in-store is still uncommon in most places, so maps like this can be really handy. So handy. Now let's look at desktop wallets. These are also hot wallets, meaning that they're connected to the internet, so you may want to limit the amount of cryptocurrency you store on them. But desktop wallets often have additional features like added privacy features. Wasabi is a great privacy-focused desktop wallet for Bitcoin. Wasabi implements a tool called CoinJoin, which allows you to join your coins with various other coins in a single transaction. This adds privacy to your Bitcoin transactions because it breaks the link of where your Bitcoin came from and where it's going to. Wasabi charges a fee for you to use join and there's also a minimum amount that you have to mix. The wallet runs on Tor to help you make your transactions even more private. If you want added privacy while using Bitcoin Cash, the Electron Cash desktop wallet has some cool features. Cash Shuffle is their version of CoinJoin. It combines your BCH transactions with other people's transactions to help you mask the history of your coins. The great thing about Electron Cash is there's no fee to use Cash Shuffle. You only pay a network fee, which is a tiny amount. So I can keep my Electron Cash wallet shuffling in the background for a week and only pay a penny. The more you shuffle your coins, the higher the anonymity set. This means how many other people you're mixing your coins with, and the more private your transactions. I like my privacy. Electron Cash also has another privacy option called Cash Fusion. It's like CoinJoin, but the transactions are made to look like normal transactions, so you can't tell that the coins have been mixed. There are other popular desktop and web wallets that are good for staking and earning interest, but I'll go into those in my DeFi episode. Now let's talk about cold wallets. If you're storing a large larger amount of crypto, you may want to use a cold wallet or cold storage, which basically means disconnected from the internet. And the most popular type of cold wallet is a hardware device. These are small devices that you plug into your computer when you want to access the crypto on them. They're much more secure than a software wallet on your phone or desktop. Even if your computer is compromised with a keylogger or remote access tool, these cold wallets will help keep your crypto safe. Some popular brands include KeepKey, Trezor, and Ledger. They've all built reputations around security. Most of the hacks you hear about from security papers and researchers are when you have physical access to the device. So if you keep it secure, it turns out to be a very safe way to store your crypto. These wallets all work in a similar way. To manage your crypto, you connect your hardware to your phone or computer. Then you put in a pin, select the cryptocurrency you want to manage. They all interface with some kind of software, either a website or an app that you download, and it's how you manage your crypto. Each of these devices supports a large number of different cryptocurrencies. These are all products that I have tried and use, and they store your keys offline. This makes them more resistant to hacking attempts, and people often use such wallets for coins that they don't plan to spend day to day. The same way that I would never walk around with $1,000 cash in my wallet, I wouldn't keep $1,000 in a phone wallet. So hardware wallets can be a great way to store the bulk of your savings. An important note, make sure you buy your hardware wallet directly from a verified seller i.e. from the companies themselves. I wouldn't recommend buying these devices from a third party or second hand because there's more chance that the device has been tampered with and might steal your crypto. Warning, warning. Safety tips. When you first set up your wallet, whether it's a hardware device or a phone wallet, you were given some kind of recovery seed. It might be a string of words, a string of digits, or it might be a password that you create. Make sure you back these up. If anything goes wrong with your device, it's this backup that will still allow you to access your crypto. Remember, anyone who has access to this recovery seed can access your crypto. Now, how do you keep these backups safe? Rule number one, never share your backup in any form with anyone. Keep it secret. Rule number two, it must be stored in a safe place. Don't write it in a Word file and then store that file on your desktop or in a Dropbox. 
Don't take a digital photo or screenshot. Don't store your backup on a computer or cell phone. Don't even print it out. Most printers actually store a history of things printed out on the device and most are also Wi-Fi enabled, which makes them pretty insecure. Just stay away from digital devices unless you're a whiz with encryption. So what can you do? Well, one option is to write it down by hand on a piece of paper. Now, paper can easily be destroyed, so I would recommend making at least two copies and storing them safely in geographically distant places. Or you can write it on something like metal that won't be destroyed in a flood or fire. These are called key keepers, and there are a lot of cool options out there. I buried a large amount of gold under that same tree years ago. I have since moved it. The world of cryptocurrency can be confusing, so take it slowly. Make sure you fully understand what you're doing before you dive in. If you have any questions about what we've covered, ask them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond. The products I mentioned are just some of the wallets available. They're ones that I use currently and like, and I haven't been paid by any of them to promote their products. They're just things that I use in my everyday life and I think that they'll make your life easier as you start to use crypto every day too. In the next video, I'll dive into how to purchase crypto, meaning how to exchange your government fiat for cryptocurrency that you can start using every day. Stay tuned.